All right, today this is high liability video. I don't suggest doing this at home. Again, I'm doing this video just because we do have guys that no matter what, you're not gonna bring your bike to the shop. I'm gonna be showing how to do wheel bearings, okay? Tapered wheel bearings. They ran these up till 99, okay? Um, if you're getting your tire changed, if you take it in somewhere and change the tire, if you change the tire, um, if you buy a used bike, first thing you wanna do is definitely any of those things, get your wheel bearings checked, have the end play set up. They're tapered style bearings, unlike the newer bearings and the new bikes, they're sealed bearings. These bearings need to be grease, uh, they have to be adjusted as far as spacer wise, okay? Um, if you are taking bearings out, whenever we do a tire change, we're going to go ahead and pull the seals, we're going to inspect these bearings. What we're going to do is we're going to clean them up and we're going to inspect them, make sure they don't need to be replaced. Um, general rule of thumb, the guys in the shop, uh, they used to come to me when I worked at a dealer, they would ask, you know, do you think these need replaced? My basic theory on these is if you have to ask yourself the question, then they need to be replaced. Um, you will get some wear marks. They only get inspected. Your tires are going to wear out about every 10,000 miles or so. So that's the only time they're going to get inspected. Um, they do build up a lot of times. Sometimes you'll take them out. They look like they've been sitting at the bottom of a creek, okay? The seals didn't seal as good back then, depending on the conditions, how you wash your bike. If you have an older bike with these bearings, do not use a pressure washer or anything around the wheels. You will get it into there. Um, so basically what I'm going to do, I've already got this disassembled. We're just using this as a mock-up wheel because uh, I, I actually don't have a set of wheel bearings we're changing. We're just doing this for a video. So basically what I have here is I use a dummy shaft, okay, which is a spare axle. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the one tapered bearing and we're going to put it down on the axle with some spacers underneath of it, okay? Then you're going to have a sleeve here. Some of them will have this, some of them won't, these little discs on here. That's basically just to keep the sleeve, this is your inner sleeve, from falling around inside the wheel while you're trying to set it up. We're going to take that and we're going to slide that over top down on there, okay? So tapered bearing pointing up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our wheel and we're going to install it very carefully. Break this side up, okay? You're going to put this down over the shaft. You do not drop it on there. If you drop one of those bearings, you're going to need to replace it, obviously. Any kind of gank in it is going to cause an issue, okay? Now, if you're um, starting from base, this is what I usually suggest. I mean, you can, if, if we're cleaning the bearings uh, and the bearings look good, we'll put it on here and we're going to tighten it down. We're going to check the end play on it. If you're starting with new bearings, I didn't show you, you know, basically with these you have to pound the cup out of the wheel. If you're replacing them, this is the cup. You're going to need a special tool. And it's kind of uh, barbaric the way that, that we do it. It's just the way that you actually do it. You put the, the remover in there, you pound it out, you pound the other side out, and you pound new ones in, okay? You never replace just the tapered bearing. You always replace these as a set, okay? You don't do just half, you don't do just one bearing, you do the whole deal, okay? Now, you've got different, different thickness spacers to get the end play on these bearings correct, okay? And then you're gonna see I have one spacer here that has a step on it. You have only one of them, step washer spacer, okay? These spacers come in only specific sizes. They come Two thousandths, four thousandths, eight thousandths, sixteen thousandths, and thirty-two thousandths, okay? Now, for this, I'm going to show you the easiest way to do this, and it's kind of mathematical is the way that you figure it out. So we've got the bearing, we've got the spacer in here. What we're going to do is we're going to take two thirty-two thousand spacers, and we're going to drop them down into the top here. We're going to take our step spacer, and we're going to place it with the step going up okay this is always going to face the bearing and the reason why is you see this race right here that needs to sit against there so that this whole bearing isn't running in a flat okay so this will always be facing the bearing okay so you're going to take that step spacer and you're going to face it up towards the bearing and then you're going to put your bearing down in there now you need to do this setup with the bearings totally clean no grease in them okay so now we're going to take some spacers here. We're going to put it down so that we know that we're above the threads. We're going to take this and we're going to take the nut. We're going to put it down on there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our torque wrench, which is set up at what you would be running for your axle torque. If you're front or rear, 50, 65 foot pounds, whatever you're at, 60 foot pounds for your model bike. Okay. 
And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to spin this wheel while you're torquing it. If this wheel starts to stop the spin, you know you don't have enough spacers in there and you've got to back off and put some more spacers in there. Two thirty thousandths, we shouldn't have a problem. Thirty-two thousand spacers. Now, I can lift up on this wheel and you're going to feel some end play, okay? So, spec on these bearings is two to six thousandths, okay? You're going to need a digital, or you don't have to have a digital, I'll use an analog, but you're going to need either a digital or analog here, indicator, and you're going to put it down so you're touching the top of the shaft. Now, if you're using one of these, you see this tip right here? You need to make sure this is tight. These will loosen up and it will throw off your measurement. So make sure that little anvil on the end is tight. I'm going to be right on the end of the, the shaft there. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this on zero. This is in five ten thousandths, but every big line is a thousandth. So we're going to pick this up and we're going to see what we got here, okay? So basically we've got about twenty-seven thousandths, okay? We need to be two to six. You know you have a 32,000 spacer in there. You have two, two 32,000 spacers, okay? So if you do the math, we know that we need to come down uh, probably about, we need to put about a 6,000 spacer in there. So I'm going to loosen this up, take this off. Now, the way that I do this is I use a magnet. If you go picking this up, Okay, first of all, your sleeve's going to fall out, your space is going to fall out, everything else. I go to the inside of here, and I'm just going to lift this bearing up, place that down on the table, and then I'm going to pull my spacer out here. It will come out. I'm going to pull my other spacer out here. I'm going to leave that 32 down. Actually, I'll pull this 32 out because I want to show you something, okay? So I'm going to put one of these 32s back in the bin, and I'm going to get me, I'm going to do an 8,000 spacer here. I'm, feeling that that's probably where I need to be with the mathematics in my head. You can have as many of these in there as you want. If you have a 32, a 4, and a 2, whatever you have, you can have three or four of these, okay? Just make sure that if you have a thin spacer that you want it in between. So you put your thicker spacer first, your thinner spacer, and that way you sandwich that thin spacer because those 2,000 spacers, their, their shims are like paper, okay? Again, step, side, towards the bearing, has to be towards the bearing. We're gonna put that down in there, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our bearing back down onto there, and then we're gonna take our spacers again, and we're gonna put them back down, tighten this up, and the same thing here, okay? Since I'm taking my educated guess here. Now, sometimes your measurements, you'll come out and you'll say 32, well, I needed to get rid of 27, so that means a five you'll put a, you don't have a five, you have a four and a two and an eight thousand six um, spacer. So you're not gonna have that choice. Go with the bigger spacer because that's gonna make sure that you don't bind up and then you can work backwards. Same thing, spin the wheel, do your torque, okay? Now we're all torqued up. We didn't stop rotating, so I know that I didn't go too thin. Same thing, we're gonna take this indicator here, dial indicator, we're going to put it down on, turn the magnet on, make sure the anvil's tight, we're going to set this at zero, and what I'm looking for is two to six thousand. You want to shoot for two, okay, because that's going to be tighter, it's going to make the wheel better, okay, it's going to make your ride better, it won't feel so loose goose going down the road. And basically, I've got three thousandths right there, you can see it, each big line is a thousandth of an inch, okay, so we got three thousandths. Sometimes if you push down on it, you'll see it move a little bit. Back up, so push down, you're zero. Up, about three and a half, actually. I've got an eight in there. So basically, if I go to a six, that would take two thousandths away. I'd be too shy. I'd only end up a thousandth. So we're going to have to run with this three thousandths. I would rather be at about two, but three is very much acceptable. There's no problem with that, okay? So now, once you're done with that, you're all set up. It does not matter which side the spacers are on, okay? They can go on the break this side, they can go on the non-break this side, it doesn't matter. As long as they're in there, and they're in there correctly, then you won't have a problem. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take these bearings out, and you're going to put them in a bearing packer. You can do it by hand, or you can put them in a bearing packer, which makes it a whole lot easier. And you're going to fill these bearings with grease, okay? 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to have the seal, and the seals have a lip inside them. You're going to fill that seal with grease also, and then you're going to install those seals inside there. Now, we see this all the time. These are greased bearings, okay? You use grease in these. We're going to pack this with grease. We're going to install it. We're going to take the seal, and we're going to pack the seal inside of it with grease, and we're going to install it. You're going to roll this back in the bike, when you go to put this in, you're going to coat this axle with grease. Do not use anti-seize. Anti-seize is metal. It will get in the bearings and it up. New bikes with sealed bearings use anti-seize. Old bikes use nothing but grease. If you mix grease and anti-seize together, then you know you definitely got a problem. You shouldn't have that together. So, if you plan on doing wheel bearings, make sure that you have the correct setup. Make sure you know what you're doing. I'm not taking liability if you mess this up, if you don't do it right. I'm just trying to help some people out that do not come into shops or at home trying to do a restoration on their father's bike or something. Some people want to do it on their own. This is something that, like I said, needs to be checked. If you take your tires off and take it somewhere to get the tires changed and you have these style bearings in it, check the bearings. If you buy a used bike, have them checked. Do not go riding around. They will fail on you. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can call us at Old Town Cycle, and we'll take care of you. Thank you.